What's up, everybody? This is EvanForGrips.com, continuing with Project Get Me Stacking. Uh, today we're going to do yet another mindset question, and this one goes out to all the young, aspiring poker pros out there. If you ever thought about going pro, then this is a good video to start with. So, dear Evan, first off, I'd like to thank you for everything that you have done for the poker community. You have made learning the game really enjoyable, and I love your videos. I've now been playing poker for about six months, and after starting with $25 on 888, I have managed to build it up to about $300. I really enjoy playing, but sometimes I wonder if professional poker is a suitable vocation for me. Good that you're thinking about it. However, I do not wish to ask what skills are required to become a professional poker player. Instead, I would like to know more about the emotional side of it. Okay. Well, for the most part, I enjoy playing poker. I've found that over the last six months, I've become slightly more depressed. Even though I'm still at the micro stakes, sometimes I will become depressed for several days after a bad run. Is this normal? Yes. If not, then how can I learn to improve my mental fortitude so that I can deal with the emotional swings? This is great. I was, I was just talking with a friend about this yesterday, actually. Um, once I move up to higher stakes, I imagine that this problem will only escalate. I would really like to play professionally, although I would hate to spend the rest of my life in a semi-depressed state. Thank you in advance for your help. I look forward to seeing what you will make in the future. P.S. Get stacking from Alex53. And um, actually, before I get into my answer, since it, it just kind of came to me there, the emotional swings are there. They're unavoidable. They're definitely part of the game. But your expectation is going to determine how significant those swings are. If your expectations are very, very modest, and you come up short, it's going to be like a small distance. right? Whereas if your expectations are up here, and things don't quite work out that way and you end up here or even here, that gap, that huge distance is going to feel a lot more painful than if you just go from like here to here. And I know me doing this with my fingers isn't ex exactly a perfect example and doesn't explain the concept perfectly, but if you're more realistic about your expectations, then you won't be as upset when things go poorly. Or if you acknowledge that losing days will happen and losing weeks may even happen, then they're a lot easier to deal with than if you convince yourself you're just going to win all the time. Or when you play, you're going to win 10 buy-ins every session, so when you only win three buy-ins, you know, that's disappointing and that's a problem. So uh, right away, a great way to improve your mental fortitude to deal with the emotional swings is to just be very realistic in your expectations so that most of the time you're going to fall within them and nothing is going to be a surprise and therefore things aren't going to be difficult to deal with. So this is a really serious topic, and for any aspiring pros out there, I'm really glad you decided to watch this video before taking the plunge. Being a poker pro can be very exciting and very fulfilling if you go about it the right way. Um, if you're going to be a poker pro, you have to treat it the same as you would any other profession. So when you go pro, poker is no longer a game, it's your job. And you playing your best becomes an obligation. So you have to be willing to work long hours and you have to spend time studying as well. You know, think of it, think of your studying as the equivalent of like going to school. If you want to be a lawyer, you go to law school for like two years. If you want to be an accountant, you go to, is it business school? You, know, you go to accounting school for two years. If you want to run a business, you get a, an, an MBA. If you want to be a, doctor, you go to medical school. If you want to be a poker pro, well, you would probably want to go to poker school. And uh, Well, actually, if you're here, you're kind of in the right place. Uh, but anyway, let's get into the uh, more complete answer regarding this question. So if you follow this plan, you know, of taking it seriously and putting in your time and effort, and give it your best effort all the time, then you'll have a very good chance of avoiding some of the toughest difficulties of going pro. But regardless, uh, they should definitely be mentioned as uh, 
just like as a warning for anyone who is considering poker as a profession and a reality check for everyone who thinks that playing being a poker pro is just all ups and no downs and you just live in the rock star lifestyle all the time. You live the rock star lifestyle some of the time. Not necessarily all the time. And no, this is not a mistake. Uh, this bullet point, I left it there for the whole presentation because it's a big pitfall that a lot of people run into is that they get consumed by the game right away and just kind of like forget everything else and they're kind of like all in on poker. They got all their eggs in one basket and then when if things go bad in poker then like life just goes completely to shit. So it's really, really important that if you want to be a poker pro you do not get completely consumed by the game and you maintain other interests and hobbies so that when poker isn't going well other aspects of your life can be going well um, in your interests or hobbies or your friends or whatever. Um, but if all you have is poker, then you're really you're really flirting with disaster. Because when it's going great, life's going to be amazing. But when it's not going so great, life's going to feel like it's the worst thing ever. And having other outlets is very important for maintaining that happiness and avoiding the pain and depression that a downswing can cause. Anyway, the first difficulty of going pro, of course, is financial instability. Unlike a real job, uh, with poker, you can go into the office and lose money. Like, who would have thought, right? You don't have a guaranteed paycheck at the end of the week, and that lack of certainty can cause fear, or in some cases, as Alex's email mentioned, uh, small bouts of depression. So, although your paycheck can be a lot bigger than other people's are going to be your weekly paycheck, yours is going to experience a lot more variance, whereas theirs is very specific and they know exactly what it's going to be and they can plan around that. So once you've put in a lot of time playing, you can get a feel for how much you actually expect to make. You need to make sure that it's more than enough, otherwise it's you're going to be just like working so hard to get by. Um, don't put yourself in a position to lose more than you can comfortably handle in one session because it may have a spillover effect into other days and really slow your progress or even set you back. You want to be very consistent when you're playing as a poker pro. Um, and your bankroll has to cover your day-to-day. -day. So know how much you spend and make sure you can expect to win enough to cover. Um, now. For people who want to go pro, a lot of people are like, they're rushing out of school, they want to go pro, or they don't like their jobs, it's like, fuck it, I want to be a poker pro. And I would say don't rush into it. Um, it's really easy to play poker part-time, even like professionally part-time, without, again, being all in. So you can keep your real job or keep going to school and still play poker at nights or on the weekend and then see how you do. Like, if you're doing okay, then you know that's fine but it may not be a suitable profession but if you're really really crushing it, you're consistently winning and you've proved over 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 hands that you can do this and then you can think about actually going pro full time uh, there's nothing wrong with being a part time poker pro uh, just if you're gonna go for it all out make sure you're ready uh, so yeah part time jobs can really help or having a real job can take the pressure off uh, and you can have poker as a way to supplement your income and still get a lot of the other benefits that the game provides. Um, also, knowing that you don't rely exclusively on your poker winnings to sustain your life uh, really takes the burden off and allows you to play more comfortably because you have a lot less worry about you know making a big bluff, which is important. So number two, which I feel is almost a bigger pitfall because it's one that's not as obvious and people don't see coming is that as a poker pro you're very likely to experience social isolation at least in the beginning um, when you're playing on your computer it's the same as being a gamer you're doing a lot of your play by yourself solo and like you know a lot of your time learning is going to be spent reading forums or watching videos which is again an activity that you do by yourself so that can make it difficult but a really good way to overcome that and to speed up your learning process is to have poker friends to talk with and yes e friends count so if you have a nice group of people on Skype that you chat with or um, some other like chat forum or whatever or people you communicate 
through correspondence, through email, that's going to be really helpful and make you feel a little bit more connected, which is very important to your overall happiness. And in the casino, for the live players, it's not really a friendly place. Although people will act friendly at the end of the day, everyone's trying to take each other's money, which makes for a bit of an aggressive environment. And obviously, while you're playing your sessions, you want to have that kind of killer instinct about you as well that you would, you know, steal a pot off your grandma if she was the one at the table with you because it's all about winning. But it's important to be able to turn it off when the session's done because it'll make you much more pleasant to be around, especially for your non-poker friends who don't really understand it. Um, and it's important to spend time with other people. So don't forget like your old friends that you had before you got into poker, even though in some ways like work life, you may not be able to relate to them. It's still really important to maintain those relationships because it's going to make you a lot happier. Uh, spending too much time on your own will often lead to unhappiness. And that kind of compounds the effect of downswings is that, you know, you can be running bad. So you shut everyone else out and you don't have anyone to talk to. So you can't vent and you can't like get things off your chest and work your way through it. So talking to other people really helps and it's important to maintain your friends and make friends along the way because otherwise they might not be there for you when you need them if you just kind of ignore them for so long. And yeah, having to play good games can put you in a tough spot because you know, you're know you consumed by the game. You have to stick around and play the good sessions which can lead to missing out on activities with friends. So sometimes it's important to be like, you know what, this is a great game, but there will be another one another day. And it's okay if I miss this one particular game because you got to remember that um, all aspects of your life are very important and it's not only about your job and only about money. And I think this translates to outside poker as well. Then finally, we got the big one because we already talked about consumed by the game. Do other things that make you happy so that um, you have options. You know, if the games aren't good or you don't feel like playing that day or you played for a week straight and you need a day off, you want to have activities that you can do or things you enjoy um, that'll make you happy on your days off so you aren't only thinking about poker all the time. It's important to give your mind a break sometimes. Uh, and that will help you deal much better with downswings because you'll have other things you can do. Uh, but they're gonna happen. Uh, downswings are a part of the game, and the key is being prepared for them, knowing that inevitably they are going to come, and then being prepared for them and knowing how to deal with them. If you've been playing well and steadily earning on your sessions, you'll be more able to handle downswings because you know your graph won't look so bad. You'll still be higher than when you started. <laughs> and if you start out with a downswing, well, um, spend some more time studying and try again. <laughs> And that way you can make sure they don't last too long. Also, as a professional, a big skill is being able to desensitize yourself to the money. Like, do you think when Durr made that sick bluff against Phil on High Stakes Poker that he thought, you know, it's a, it's a nice size house. I'm betting on this pot with eight high or nine high or whatever it was. Like, you can't think like that because then you won't be able to pull the trigger. Um, but the thing is, the longer you play and the more you get exposed to variance and higher stakes, the easier it becomes because you're just you're just used to it. The more you feel, you see flips happening and you're used to taking those losses and taking those wins, it just becomes more normal. And therefore, the less you will think about the chips as money and the big losses won't affect you as much. So know that they're going to come, um, but if you prepare for them or like you know if you dealt with a downswing at small stakes then when you get to one at mid stakes it's not going to seem as bad because you're like okay you know i know that this happens and i know i'm going to get through it and i know eventually i'm going to finish up on top so i'll just keep playing my best and wait for that to happen the key is to not lose confidence when you go through a downswing because that's when you can really start to drive yourself a little crazy um, but yeah the more you know about your abilities and your expectation, the more certain you can feel about what's going to happen, how much you're going to make, and plan the rest of your life accordingly. Um, for anyone who, you know, if you do get into a downswing, you're not sure what to do, just head on over to grips.com forward slash dealing with downswings. Um, I'll put a link to this below the video as well. 
And that's like eight tips that will help you get through it. And like, for anyone who's a good player, um, you'll be fine. You get through it, no problem. It's just, it's just part of the game. And yeah, that's, that's what you got to think about if you want to go pro. Um, that's just the start of the list. Obviously, there are many other things you need to think about, but these are, these are a good four ones to be prepared for, and that you want to assess before you go for it. Because if you don't think you can handle these four things, then you really want to take a step back and think about whether or not trying to go pro is a smart move or not. But um, I think I think it's great, and I think as long as you maintain other things to keep you happy, <clears throat> poker can be a great way to supplement kind of like that like free lifestyle where you can you can set your own hours and have lots of time to play and do other things. But um, trust me, I, I I went through bouts where all I did was play poker and like yeah. You can, you can get sad, you can get upset because you just have nothing else. So take it from someone with experience, someone who knows. It's really important to maintain those other interests, hobbies, and friendships. And when they're in the picture, then your poker game gets even better. You know, they, they all just help each other. They all lead to more happiness, confidence, and performance, which is what you really want at the end of the day. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think about that. And if you have... Well, any pros out there watching this video, feel free to add some bullet points in the comments as to things you think people must consider as well before deciding to go pro. And any aspiring guys out there, let me know if you think maybe I missed something, something should be added, something should be taken away. I'm happy to hear what you guys have to say. And, uh... Oh yeah, if you have any questions. <clears throat> please send them to evanagrips.com. With the subject, get me stacking, and I will try to make a video response for you so that I can help get you stacking. And if you're enjoying these videos, you want me to keep making more, I'm probably going to do it anyway, but if you want to be the first person to get these videos when they come up, please subscribe to my channel and show your support to the Get Me Stacking Project and Grips Poker Training. I really appreciate it. I hope you found the video informative and insightful. This has been Evan for Grips.com.